can't believe I'm doing this. And when I say that this was completely not planned, I'm being serious because I am currently sitting on the floor of my office at work on my lunch break. And something has just been tugging at my heart that I need to share this story with someone, with you guys. Um, I don't know, with anyone who needs it, who wants to listen, who cares to hear about it, but um, it's really hard for me to talk about any of this in general, but I never imagined that I would sit here and talk to my camera about my cancer journey. I don't even like saying the word. It still just sends waves of panic through my body and I'm really trying to not let a word or a time in my life have so much power over me. So I just I just need to do this. Um, so for those of you who don't know, um, almost exactly three years ago, I was diagnosed with stage two breast cancer. And I'm gonna talk a little bit about that today and share kind of just from start to finish. And when I say finish, it's, you know, life is an ongoing thing. So from start to present, I guess, is the more accurate way to say it. But um, so I'm just gonna start at the beginning and I'm just gonna dive right in. So on April 13th, 2016, I went to my gynecologist for my regularly scheduled annual exam. I don't typically think twice about those appointments. I mean, they're not the most pleasant, but it was just a routine checkup. And as soon as she gets to the breast exam portion, she pauses and says, hmm, this feels a little bit firm right here. Have you always had this? And I'm thinking, I, I don't know. Um, wh what do you mean? Um, this was a new gynecologist, by the way, so she had never examined me before in the past. So, she says, I don't think it's anything, but just to be sure, let's schedule an ultrasound. And that was all it took for me to go into complete and total panic. I started crying. I was so freaked out. David wasn't in the room with me. And as soon as I got out to the front where he was sitting, Thankfully, he was actually at the appointment with me, but as soon as I got out to the lobby, I walked out to him with tears in my eyes and I told him I need to schedule an ultrasound because the doctor felt something. And so he, like the amazing guy that he is, springs into action and gets on the phone with the breast care center where they do the ultrasounds and somehow manages to get me an appointment for later that day. So I'm a mess. I'm so worried. I'm so anxious. I've had just really intense fears about illness my whole life. I think probably from losing my dad when I was 10. And so it sort of felt like it was my worst nightmare coming true. So I go to the um, ultrasound and I'm in a panic. They do the ultrasound and even just looking at the paperwork, seeing why I was there, the word lump and all of that just was so hard. So um, 
they do the ultrasound and the radiologist comes back into the room afterwards and says, we found three areas of abnormality. We need to biopsy them. So at this point I'm thinking, okay, that's it. So normally biopsy appointments are scheduled like weeks and weeks out and I'm thinking, I don't know how I'm gonna wait this long just living in this in-between state of not knowing and somehow again completely God ordained David was able to get me a spot the very next day so I show up and I'm laying on the bed and they perform the biopsy it's pretty straightforward and the nurse or the not the nurse the uh, ultrasound technician because they it was an ultrasound guided biopsy and and the technician said to me I don't know how you got this appointment they are always so booked out this appointment was meant for you and at the time I was hoping that that would just be like a really cool story about how I got to get my answer that I was perfectly fine super fast and move on with my life so I'm feeling like anxious and um, sorry pretty pretty fearful but at the same time you have this thought in the back of your head like I mean I'm scared but obviously this doesn't happen to 27 year olds like you you feel like okay this is all just gonna end up being like a, a stressful and scary story that I tell later on down the road so I go to work the next day on Friday and I'm anxious but I'm just like I have to do things to get my mind off of waiting for this phone call I can't just be stressed out the whole weekend and then um, the work day ends and I get in my car to go pick up David we both work at the same place and on my way over there I get a call from my gynecologist and the first thing she says is how are you and my voice is shaking and I'm, I'm so scared that the only thing I can think of is I'm I'm a little nervous how are you and I don't like I don't know and the next thing she says is unfortunately Chelsea they did find some cancer and man, even just talking about it right now feels like I'm reliving it in that moment my whole life changed um, Gosh, this video is gonna be really long. I'm gonna try to speed through it a little bit. So, it's Friday, April 15th. I find out that I have breast cancer. And the next few weeks are, thankfully, kind of a blur. It was just a series of meeting all of my medical team, um, my surgeon, my chemo, chemo oncologist or um, medical oncologist my radiation oncologist my reconstructive surgeon who else was there there was like some integrative medicine doctor like a holistic kind of doctor and just oh a, a genetics therapist or a genetics counselor just this whole string of people that I needed to meet and there were a lot of terms being thrown around a lot of definitions a lot more testing I had to do body scans um, bone scans MRIs a lot of just awful awful things to make sure that it hadn't spread anywhere else to make sure that my right breast was unaffected 
I did another biopsy for a suspicious area that they found on that side, which thankfully end up, ended up being nothing. I met with a fertility doctor because going through chemo um, can be very dangerous for fertility, and so we ended up freezing embryos, and I was going through the whole process of giving myself hormone injections in the stomach and thankfully we had um, a good friend of ours who was a neighbor and a nurse so I didn't actually have to do the injections myself but so I did that um, egg retrieval and then all of this leading up to my first day of chemotherapy which was May 19th and I remembered one of the biggest things that I was most afraid of was the idea of losing my hair I don't know I feel like losing your hair is kind of the visual indicator to other people that you are sick and I didn't realize how much of my identity was wrapped up in my hair I had never really felt too strongly one way or another about my hair but the thought of losing it and knowing that it wasn't by choice was one of the hardest parts during those initial days so I decided to take back a little bit of control and I ended up cutting my hair into a pixie before I started chemo after my first chemo they said that my hair would begin to fall out around the 14 day mark and it ended up lasting until my next chemo which was not until 21 days later and it actually lasted a few days after that um, I, I buzzed it and it was still doing okay in fact my oncologist was pretty shocked at how well it was holding on she like had never seen anyone's hair last that long and so I, I buzzed it. I think in total it was around 25 days when I finally just took it all off myself. So in a way it was kind of nice because I never really had to go through the process of watching my hair fall out. I don't know, I think for some people it it's cathartic to be able to, I, I don't know, but for me I didn't want to have to watch. I wanted it to do it on my own terms and take back some level of control. So I ended up doing chemo for five and a half months, which was the longest five and a half months of my life. Um, around the halfway mark, I had an MRI that showed some good progress, which was awesome chemo was horrible you don't understand the level of nausea and fatigue that it will cause and it was so frustrating because there were so many days when I thought that I could just if I just tried hard enough I could will myself to feel better and I would try so hard and I just couldn't make myself feel better. I couldn't do anything about it. And that was a really difficult time. I think I started off the chemo process trying to be really positive and really energetic and I had this this idea that I wanted to show everyone how good of a patient I was and how quickly I healed and how strong I was and and I was but I remember getting to a point near the end of chemo where I was just done I was so tired I felt so sick I was just done I basically just I don't know I think of it as like just putting my nose to the grindstone and just keeping my head down and getting through it. And so I finished my last chemo on October 27th 
David ended up throwing me a surprise party that day, which was really sweet. It was a really, really awesome day. And then I had an MRI scheduled for a few weeks later that, again, showed really, really good progress. And on November 28th, I went in for surgery to have a double mastectomy. I had my surgery, it was the Monday, it was, it was Cyber Monday, it was the Monday after Thanksgiving, and I had my surgery at noon that day, which was really hard because I, you're not allowed to eat leading up to surgery, so they made me get there early, and I had to just like hang out for hours and hours before they started. The surgery ended up taking until like 6 or 7 p.m., and they, after they finished surgery and I was in the recovery room, still one of the hardest things that I remember was finding David, looking at his face, and he looks at me and says, they still found a little bit of cancer left in one of your lymph nodes. So they removed the four around it, which were all cancer free, but there was still cancer left in that lymph node. So that was crushing news because I really wanted the chemo to get rid of all of it. And then recovery in the hospital was so hard. Um, I, it was my first time ever having to stay overnight in the hospital and for anyone else who's done it, you know that you cannot sleep. They wake you up every like half hour to check your vitals and I couldn't move on my own. I couldn't get up to go to the restroom. I couldn't sit up on my own, even just using the remote control to have my bed sit up was so painful. I was in I was in so much pain. I was shivering. I felt awful. The medicine would wear off and then I wouldn't be able to get it, get some right away, the pain medication. My doctor had also told me that the longer that you take pain medication or the longer that you're on narco narcotics after the surgery, the more likely of a recurrence, and so I was really stubborn and I didn't want to be on the medication for too long. I think I ended up taking pain meds for two days and then didn't take anything stronger than like Tylenol after that, which is typical, typical me. And so I stayed in the hospital for two nights. Typically people only stay in the hospital for one night, but I couldn't even walk on my own. And so my doctor gave the approval for me to have another night. Um, and she came into my room the next day. They did a pathology report from the lumps that they had removed from the breast, or they removed the whole thing, but they did a pathology report on the tissue from the breast where the, in the areas where they had found the cancer. And as I had suspected, based on the findings from the lymph node, there was still active cancer in the breast as well. So obviously, you know, the surgery, they remove everything and like they hope for the best. But it, it, it felt like after all this time and all this work, they were just kind of sending me off and saying, well, we did our best, you go live your life now and hopefully you're good to go. And that was just not the answer that I was looking for after the past seven months of just agony and fear and I don't know. It still is just something that like, even today, three years later, is really hard to live with. So. I go home and I stay home from work for the next month just recovering and it was around the holidays and so that kind of helped with just like my overall mood and um, just keeping my spirits up. It was nice to have like Christmas movies to watch and 
we even bought a little mini Christmas tree for our bedroom, which was really, really sweet. Um, so I heal from that for about six weeks and then, or maybe it was nine weeks, nine weeks later, I think I ended up starting radiation therapy and I was going to do that for six weeks. And let me just tell you that compared to chemotherapy, radiation is a walk in the park. I would go there and they had measured out exactly where they needed to radiate. They measure it down to like the millimeter and they actually tattoo dots onto your chest so that each time you come, because you have to go every day, so that each time you come they don't have to redraw and remeasure. So I have like three little dots that mark where the radiation was supposed to be aimed at. And so you just lay there with your arms up and you're in this room all alone obviously and it doesn't take very long but it it's difficult you know when you think about what is actually being done to you the fact that they are shooting radiation at your chest um, I, that part was a little bit challenging but the side effects are minimal um, Basically, the biggest one is that you it's like getting a really bad sunburn, honestly, and that you may feel some fatigue. So I finished radiation and all of my cancer treatment on March 21st of 2017. And again, that was a pretty, pretty monumental day. Um, and then the only things that were left were um, just like follow-up procedures and protocol. Um, I had to finish reconstructive surgery, the first one. So at the time of my mastectomy, they had started the reconstructive process. So basically they remove all of my breast tissue and put in two temporary implants. And then about three months after I finished radiation, no, not about, it was exactly three months after I finished radiation, I had a fat grafting procedure where they took fat um, from a different part of my body. So essentially they perform a liposuction. Um, I chose my thighs and they transfer, they take the fat, they purify it, and then they transfer it into the area around your breasts because radiation does a number on your breasts. Um, it makes the skin really thin and um, taut. And so it's just really to help, um, to help support the skin healing process and just to make it look more natural. And then um, three months after that surgery, again to the day, which I thought was really cool, on September 21st, 2017, I had surgery to have the temporary implants removed and have permanent implants put in. And that was um, an okay surgery. I mean, it was one of those things where at that point I'm like, this is cake. Um, oh, I forgot to mention for um, both the mastectomy and the implant procedure, I had to wear these vacuums that were um, attached to my breast. It was supposed to stimulate blood flow and um, speed up the healing process, but it was one of the most uncomfortable things it's basically these vacuums that are completely taped down to your chest it makes it feel super tight and constricted and then you have these little like ipod like circa 2003 looking things attached to them by a string and they just kind of make these like purring sounds every now and then um, and then during my first surgery, I also had drains that were um, coming out of my sides. So those are just, I don't know if you've ever had drains, you probably 
understand the concept, but for those of you who haven't, they're just little tubes that um, come out from inside of you and they have these little like clear bulbs on the end and um, fluid from your body from um, just like the surgery area drains into them and you have to empty it. It's a really gross process. You also have to measure it every time you empty it because they can't take out the drains until the output reaches a certain milliliter amount. So that was pretty terrible too. It was like all these gadgets and I had to wear a lot of like just big sweaters and shirts and jackets. Thankfully it was winter at that time, but so anyway, um, I had my final surgery September 21st and that was so insane to me that after all of that, I was just done. Um, as far as what I do now, I do continue with breast cancer protocol. So I take a hormone pill every day and I receive a hormone injection once a month. And I will do that for the next 10 years, or I guess at this point it'll be the next eight years. Um, this pill and injection basically shuts my ovaries down. So um, I have one, one pro of that, and that is that I no longer get periods. Um, there are also a lot more cons, and um, some of them are that it can, again, screw with fertility. Um, my body, as a 30-year-old woman, is in menopause, so I did experience hot flashes. Um, menopause also causes a lot of women to gain weight, so I have struggled with my weight over the last couple of years. And it just makes you feel really abnormal and alone. Um, so that has been a struggle in and of itself. I also still see my uh, medical oncologist once every four months for a physical exam and blood work. Um, and those are always just stressful. I hate I hate being at the doctor now. Um, thankfully, my medical oncologist is really, really sweet, and she does a really good job of helping to calm my fears about things. Um, what else can I share? You know, you think that once you finish with the whole treatment process, you know, you should just kind of get back to your normal life and while I do feel like after I finished everything I kind of dove headfirst back into just like really trying to experience life to the fullest you you can't get back to the normal that you once knew um, I have dealt with so much fear and anxiety and depression in the last three years and it's been ongoing. Um, I had a lot of reservations about ever taking any sort of medication, so I actually did not take any antidepressants or anti-anxiety medication during chemo, which I would say to you if you are on the fence about it and you are going through something like that, do not do what I did. Please take the medicine, it is there to help you. Um, I wish that I had. I think that it would have made it a lot easier to get through. I did not start taking it until I was just about done with all of my treatment. And I'm really glad that I did begin because, I don't know, there's just, I don't even know why there is anymore. There shouldn't be, but there is still, at least for me, such a stigma with antidepressants and anti-anxiety medication and I don't know why there shouldn't be because if I can get through a normal day and just feel balanced then why should I suffer why should I make myself live in pain and just fear and so 
so much sadness. It is not worth it to me. So I do continue to take medication for that. And again, like I said, it's not getting me up here. It's getting me to here so that I feel normal, so that I feel like I can get through the day. And that has been huge for me. Um, wow, I was not planning on having this video be that long and I probably missed a bunch of information. So if you have any questions about either my journey or um, just breast cancer in general, I'm not an expert. Um, I know more than I want to know. Um, but please don't hesitate to leave a comment down below or reach out to me on Instagram at, at dress to thrive. Um, I think I'm going to end it here because I'm feeling kind of emotionally drained and I still have to finish the rest of my work day. But I hope that you guys are having a really great day and if you watched this entire video, thank you so much for making it all the way through and being someone who is in my corner and who um, is just like here to support me and if you're going through anything like this, even if it's not health related, I'm here for you too. I'm in your corner and I'm praying for you and I love you.